All right, let's go ahead and get started. We've had a great time before the recording started, so uh, thank you for entertaining me. And this is Ryan Moran. I'm joined by my buddy Brian Owens. What's up? And I, I have a loose outline of what I'm going to go over in in this class, but really I want to leave some flexibility to, to kind of take it where uh, where you guys want and where I can provide the most value. I am facing some questions about what I'm going to be teaching next and where I'm going to be going next. And so this is the basically the overview of my philosophy. And with this, I... I'll take it wherever we want to go from here and in, in future classes from here that I, that I plan to put on. So, so I want, I want the inter the interaction has been great so far before we've even started. So I want you to keep that up and we'll take that wherever you want. And uh, Brian, if you could help me with that, that'd be spectacular. Absolutely. What I, what I basically the, the overview of my philosophy is I focus on going after what you want and there are tons of business models out there that can help you pay for whatever you want. So I, I have a quote, I have it on like the last slide here where I say that it's not how much money you make. It's what you do with your time that makes you happy. And if you can decide what to do with your time, there are tons of ways that you can pay for that. There are tons of ways. And we're going to go over what's working now. We might even cover what's not working right now. And that will that will pay for exactly the life that you want. I don't have anything to pitch on this call. I do want to, to bring attention to uh, people like Brian, who are partners of mine, and some of them are, are former students of mine, put on classes like this all the time that work with people directly on their businesses and on their business and their income streams. Just before this call, we had someone who's on the call right now, Mike Luby, talking about the money that he's making and saying, okay, what do I do next? And and Brian was working directly with him. You can work with people all the time that I have lined up to, to look at your stuff. It's at freedomfastlane.com slash trial. You can get it for a dollar and you can get like 12 coaching sessions if you want for a dollar. It's ridiculous. Like I, I don't know. I, I Someday I'll probably charge a lot more money for that. Um, I'll probably charge several hundred dollars a month for that when, when we have the capacity for it. But right now it's super cheap. And I would really recommend that if this is, if what we talk about today is something that you're interested in, you probably want to go and, and work with some coaches at freedomfastlane.com slash trial. There's my pitch. Let's go ahead and, and, and start with some stuff. What we're talking about today is grabbing life by the horns and living the life that you want. And as a, as a result, I'll show you how to pay for it. That's kind of the easy part. If, if you can, you can do the rest here. One thing, you know, I just got back from this, this uh, trip in Asia. I was in Turkey. I was in Istanbul when the riots were going on. I was in Thailand for three weeks, which was my dream trip. I always wanted to go to Thailand and I got that out of my system where I, where I really started to have some like big shifts in my life was I, I spent six days in the Philippines. I wish I had spent six weeks in the Philippines and I probably will go back later this year, but I, this is a picture. This is not something I pulled from Google images. This is maybe the only, <laughs> only picture on this presentation that I didn't pull from Google images. That's a picture from my phone in the Philippines. And one realization that I had while I was there, I wrote it down in my journal was that we're, we are always choosing. There is, I, I really believe at some level, everything in our lives we're choosing. And I don't mean like, hey, my wife got sick. Are you telling me that I chose that? No. What I mean is the circumstances that are in your control, you're choosing. I have I have people who that I surround myself with sometimes. I shouldn't say that. People who are around me sometimes, I, I will often hear them complain about something like my my friends are XYZ and they're complaining about their friends. Well then get new friends. Like that is in your control. I hate my job. Well, you can choose differently. I, ha I was uh, I was on a date with this girl once, and uh, I made this joke. I was like, I'm going to Thailand. You want to come with me? And she was like, I can't. I have work. And then I went into this deep philosophical rant where I said, well, you could. You just choose not to. She's like, no, I can't. I work. And I was like, well, that's fine. You just, you're choosing not to work. I'm sure this didn't score me any points with her. I'm not seeing her anymore. But I was, uh, I, I was being insistent to her that, you can, you're choosing to go to work. That's fine. But that's your choice. You don't have to do anything. 
There is nothing in your life that you have to do. There's no relationship that you have that you have to hold on to. It's a choice that you made. And there's this expansive thing that happens when you realize that you're constantly choosing. You're choosing the emotions that you have. You're choosing the circumstances that you're in to a very high point. There is, I believe, very little that happens to us. Most of the things that happen happen through us. And and so I want you to get that the level of income that you're settling for the the jobs that you're surrounding that you're that you're in right now the people that you're surrounding yourself with the people that you're dating those are all choices and you, if something is not satisfying choose differently you have the opportunity to do that Brian do you agree or disagree with me out of curiosity I mean, I largely agree. I, I I can't say a blanket statement that nothing comes your way that's out of your control. Sometimes things do, but sure. I think that the spirit behind what you're saying is uh, 100% true. I think, you know, for me, I know it's a comedy, but it really did like stir something in me when I was starting as an entrepreneur. But the the movie Office Space, like that was that was him. Like your girlfriend was him. You know, like he just hated this. He was tied to it. I have to do it, even though my life sucks. And then he just he gets that hypnotism thing, and then it's like, you know what? I'm not. I'm just gonna not do this anymore. Yeah. He and she's like, you, you can't just not pay your bills. And he's like, no, I just think I'm not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> and, but there are consequences to each choice. But you exactly. can choose whatever you want. You can choose exactly. whatever, what consequences you want. There's, there's someone that I like sometimes. Uh, his name is Kyle Cease. He's a, an acquaintance of mine. I've, I've met him a couple of times. And he says some things. I don't agree with everything he says, but there's one thing that he says that I absolutely stand by in which he says that our brains can – they cannot see what we're going to get as a result of a choice. They only see what we're going to give up. And as a result, we tend to be afraid. So when we're giving something up, in order to create new space for something new to come in, that's scary because all the brain can see is, what am I giving up? And so if you're in an unhappy relationship and you think about ending that, the brain says, oh, but we can't go to IHOP anymore. And, and that's what it gets stuck on is what it's going to lose. But it's, 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 it's not able to see what we're going to gain as a result of giving that up. But that's a choice we make. I think what I hear you saying is that freedom as a subject is as a topic, let's say, or a category or something that you want to attain. It's not necessarily something you're after. It's something you have. Yeah. And and realizing that you are free to make new decisions and make a new path for yourself or go a different direction is is freedom. Like realizing you are free is freedom. I just got response, man. That was awesome. Yes. I know it sounded like so esoteric, but <laughs> that's like what you're saying. It's like it's not necessarily you have to obtain freedom. You just had to realize you are free to do something different. Amen, brother. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do – this is going to be a new tradition. This is what we're going to do. Whenever somebody says something brilliant, either Brian or myself, I want everybody to hashtag the hell out of the chat box. Let's just put a bunch of hashtags <laughs> So if I'm if I was watching this right now, I would I would hashtag the hell out of that, my friend. <laughs> uh, okay, let's let's move on. So we're always point number one. Are we getting hashtags? There we go. Yeah, Brian's getting hashtags for that. All right, so, so that was just a summation of what you said. So who gets credit for that? We'll we'll share it. We'll hold All right, it. share it. So. So the first step that I always I always tell people is the first step to going after what you want is to actually decide what you want is to is to write them down. I, I'm on a really big Jim Rohn kick right now. If you guys if you guys get one thing out of what I say today, when you're making breakfast in the morning, like what I do, or when you are just getting ready in the morning, go to YouTube and just listen to some Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn is a lot – he was actually Tony Robbins' mentor. He's a lot like Tony Robbins in, in, in the way that he'll tell a story many times. So a lot of his stuff is pretty repetitive. So any of the stuff that you get will be, will be pretty good. 
and listen listen to a few of his talks because because he really simplifies this into a, a, a bite sized way that you can you can consume it and and he just recommends pulling out a journal and starting to make a list of things that you want to do things you want to learn goals you want to achieve and just keeping a running list of that to start to train your brain to to look at things that it wants and know that it's possible and know that it's available. Just start writing them down. Start writing the places you want to go, the things you want to achieve, the goals that you have. Just, just start writing them down in your journal. I journal every day. I don't always write my journal, but I at least read my journal every day to remind myself what I'm going after. So if you have things that you want, write them down. And if you guys have, I would actually be um, be curious if do you have how many of you have written goals? How many of you have somewhere that where you know where you have written down what you want out of life? Where you where you have things that you want? Karen says yes. <laughs> Stan put a bunch of hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys you guys do. Okay. Will you guys share some of them? I, I just want to understand what are some of them. Now I don't believe I'm gonna get some flack for this because of our community, but I do not believe in the law of attraction. I'm not one of those people. But what I do believe is that when you decide on something and when you remind yourself, you're more likely to bring into your life the things that will help you achieve that. If you are constantly focusing on something, if you have a vision board and you're looking at something or you write down something on a regular basis, you're training your brain to look for things that will help support that goal. I don't believe in like you send out the energy and the universe brings it to you. I just, I just don't believe that. I do believe. Yeah. That unless you're barefoot, them. right? I mean, unless you're barefoot. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I had, all right. I know you were like on a tear there and I totally disrupted your flow. That's fine. That's fine. Energy in the universe, barefoot. I couldn't help but make the connection there. <laughs> Brian's making fun of me because I, I have a grounding path. <laughs> walk around barefoot but yeah that's uh I, I believe that when you focus on something you're more likely to go after it and bring things into your life and recognize things that will support that so one of the ways that i i do my goal setting is i'll write down what my life is about right now and the goals that i'm going after and when an opportunity shows itself i just compare it to the goals that i that i set and say does this serve this or not because opportunities come up all the time and if it doesn't serve what I'm going after, it's probably not something that I want to take in right now. It might be something that I want to revisit later. So the goals that I'm seeing that you guys are putting in are things like financial freedom. I would actually uh, encourage you to specify that about what that means and what your plan is. And we can help you refine that in today's class. Uh, Jewel says, get rich so that I can travel. I would, act, again, I would encourage you to make that more specific. Things like um, how much money and how you're going to earn that. Actually, maybe that how isn't too important right now, but how much money? Like, does it mean millionaire level? Does it mean more? Does it not so much? And where do you want to travel to? Okay. <laughs> Chris Chris M says, my goal is to make a goal list. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, great. So that's the first step is just deciding what it is that you want. Now. The second step of that is looking at your goals, the ones that are central right now, and deciding what's in your life right now that is serving that or taking away from it. So I made this example of lose 30 pounds and be able to see my abs. It's a great specific goal. To support that goal, are you setting it up to win? Are the activities and are the people around you supporting you in order to reach those goals? So if, if your goal is to lose 30 pounds, let's let's do this together. Uh, here's a person. The first person I put was Alan, my barbecue buddy. Is being around that person helping you reach that goal or not? Most people would say if you're barbecuing with them regularly, probably not something that's serving that's serving you because you become who you surround yourself with. And the way I pictured Alan was, you know, Alan couldn't see his abs. So what can you do about that? Does that mean you have to say, hey, Alan, look, we're going to be barbecuing. Uh, we're going to be barbecuing vegetables for a while, or does it mean saying, "Hey, instead of this, we're going to X Y Z"? What can you do to shift that 
so that actually does it actually does serve your goals. It does support that. Second, walking an hour per day, does that serve it? Of course it does. So you'd put that in the yes column. Sitting at my desk all day, how many of us do that? I mean, I do that some days. And just recently, I had I had the goal of, of dropping my body fat from 14% to 10%. So I realized that sitting at my desk wasn't helping. So I got a stand-up desk. I just got a little adapter on my desk and I, I set it up so that I can stand at my desk a few hours a day so that I'm not sitting all the time or watching TV. What can, what can you do about that? It's, if it's not serving you, how can we change it? Well, you could walk on a treadmill. You could walk on a treadmill while you're watching TV. You could cut out an hour of that and do something else. So this, this is very revealing, guys. If you have a goal, s- setting it up to win by looking at who am I surrounding myself with and what am I doing on a regular basis and are those things supporting that goal? If you want your goal bad enough, you will see how you can change things to serve that goal. When you become obsessed with a goal, you start to see around you the things that are serving it or not serving it, and you can adjust those. Does that make sense? Brian, you with me? I'm with you, man. I'm, you're flowing. I'm, you know what? Let me get some hashtags going here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can still type in the chat box. All right. Yes. Cool. Taking it in. All right. So one of the one of the things that first of all, a question I love to ask myself, this is my favorite question when I'm looking at my goals, is how can I do this now? What can I do in order to start moving towards this goal right now? One thing that I really liked to do for a while was I would get up and I would read my goal list over and over and over. I would be pacing my room. Now, you don't have to, you don't have to do this. I, don't, I haven't done this recently. But one of the things that I like to do was just ask, it was just read my goal list over and over, say it out loud, and then I'd say, okay, how can I do this now? And my brain would start to come up with these ideas of things that I could do right now to get it moving and get into motion. And as I, I did that, I would, I would just start knocking these little steps out going towards my goal, going towards my goal, going towards my goal. A great tool for this is a a website called lifetick.com. It's free. They have a free free level. They have a paid model too. I think in the free model, you can set up to four goals and then you can set tasks under, under each one of those. And then you can actually put other people on your account so that your goals get sent to them so they can hold you accountable. And if you're a Freedom Fastlane member, you can do this with your coaches. You can do this with your other mastermind partners inside of Freedom Fastlane. You can do this with whoever you want. You can do it with personal friends who will keep you accountable to the goals that you have. So you can set little tasks under each goal. So when you're coming up with these ideas of what you need to do, other people can see them if you want to. Like on mine, I only have a couple people seeing them. And it's a great, great resource to get yourself moving towards something. It's uh, a Liz asks, how do you spell that? It's it's on here, right here. Lifetick.com. L-I-F-E-T-I-C-K.com. Lifetick.com is a great tool. I use it. I actually have on my calendar times that I go over my goals and go over like asking myself how I can move my goals forward. And I use Lifetick to kind of organize everything. And I just I just have a free account. That's all I have. Okay. So uh, this is that's like the first step in in my overall philosophy, and and I, I like this this quote that I came up with one day, and I say it a lot, which is I say it it's it's in my my book, which was just published on Amazon. It's a dollar ninety nine. There's my pitch. Or if you're a Prime member and you have a Kindle, I think you can get it for free. And I'd simply say, you're going to die one day. Stop doing shit you hate. You don't have time for it. If there's if there's things in your life that you don't want, where you're you're that don't energize you, stop. Just stop doing them. Like there's, I what one of my favorite videos. I'll, I'm going to bring it up in a couple slides again. Is is Gary Vaynerchuk is giving this talk, 
and he, he says, there is no reason in 2008 to be doing stuff you hate. And that was five years ago. And it's even more relevant now because there's even more opportunity now. So just like you don't have time to do stuff that you hate. You just, you don't have time for it. And while I was in, um, was, oh, wait, uh, Stan, the URL for the trial of coaching is freedomfastlane.com. My blog is freedomfastlane.com. For coaching, it's freedomfastlane.com slash trial, not freedomfastlane, freedomfastlane. Thanks for that question. Um, all right, so my, my, my quote in here is, you're going to die one day. Stop doing shit you hate. You don't have time for it. So what does that mean about me? Well, I was, this is me pondering my life, by the way, <laughs> at a football game. While I was in, um, while I was in Asia, I started to have these, these thoughts of like, what do I really want? What do I, what am I really passionate about? And what things in my life serve, serve those and don't serve me? And I started to, to ask the question, like if, if I were to take my own advice, to stop doing stuff that I hate, would I be doing the same things that I'm doing now? And if I was, if I was honest, I had to say no. I just, I don't wake up in the morning and want to sell products about making money online. I just, I just don't. And part of the reason why I am holding this class is because I wanted to say that publicly because there's, there's this, I don't know, there's this perception of people who sell make money online products that Everybody loves doing it because they're making a bunch of money. And I, I, if I'm being honest, look, no one who sells make money online products likes it. No one. Nobody. The only thing they like is the money. Now I'm talking about a specific type of make, like the beginners, like sir, like going after the beginning people who hide often hide behind a pen name. No one enjoys it. Everybody's looking for a way out. It's just not fulfilling. And, and I, I wanted to bring this up. Um, holy cow, I just realized I haven't been showing my screen this whole time. Yeah, I thought that was on purpose. Sorry, a lot of people Oh, oh my goodness. Are you that. serious? I'm embarrassed. My apologies, guys. You should be able to see my screen now. Can you see it now? Yep. All right, cool. So I'll, I'll briefly, here's the picture that I took in the Philippines that's so cool that I took on my phone. Um, here's the... Here's the screenshot of the two columns of is somebody is something serving you or something not serving you. Here's what lifetick.com looks like. And here's a picture of my book, which you can get on Amazon for free or for like $1.99. It's called The Freedom Manifesto. There we go. And there's a picture of me pondering my life. <laughs> there we go. Thanks for letting me know, guys. Appreciate it. Um, so really, I, I was pondering if I woke up in the morning, do I want to wake up and sell make money online products? And I, I don't. And I started to look at what my passions are and their, their freedom, going after the things I want and performing and, and being in front of audiences. Like that's, those are the things I'm really passionate about. And if I was going to take my own advice, I had to really look at cutting some things out that weren't serving me. And now uh, most of you who are on this call have been on my list and have followed me about making money online. And that's great. I want to e expose, if you will, some truths behind that model. And I'm not doing this to slam anybody. I, I'm actually doing this because I want you to see the model that people follow, that follow, that, that teach this. There's nothing wrong with it, but most of you who have been following me for a while no longer need it. And we're going to go into this a little bit further, but I made this little diagram. This is how the internet marketing space works most of the time. For the people who are, who are selling entry-level products, a lot of the ClickBank products, this is how it works. This is how they make their money. They round up a bunch of affiliates that are their buddies that they've met at conferences. They've met at, uh, you know, other connections, other people who have introduced them. They round them up and they tell them that a launch is coming. 
Then they put together a video sales letter that sells something. And most of the time, it's pretty much the same as all the other ones. Or it might be a little bit more hypey or it might have a different hook. And the whole, the whole point there is, is to get the front end conversion. Then they go through the upsell path, which all of you know about because you've experienced and you all hate it when you have to sit there and watch a bunch of upsell videos. And uh, can you guys see, is this all big enough? Somebody saying this is hard to see. You might have to squint. If I do this, can you guys still see my screen? No, it's black. Okay. It's trying to make it bigger. Um, let's do this. Uh, this is a bit good as going to get. Sorry about that. But they get sent through an upsell path. And then they broker the lead. That lead gets sent off to coaching floors where people get pitched on $5,000 one-on-one coaching. They have some sort of other product that they sell in the members area and then they make a bunch of money and then they get in line to support all their buddies who are going to do a launch next time. And they put a bunch of offers in their autoresponder and then they mail out for other launches that this is, this is how it works. And just so you know, guys, I do this. There's nothing inherently wrong with this, but I want, but most of the time, the content is all the same. So if you're out there buying a bunch of make money online products and you aren't seeing results, there's a reason why. There's a reason why, because most of it is the same. And we all know in the internet marketing space that we can always come back to doing one of these launches if we need to eat. We can always round up our buddies and say, hey, I'm gonna do this launch. Can you support me? And they'll all say yes, because that's how the game works. There's, and, and there's nothing inherently wrong about it. I'm just saying for most of you who have been on my list for a while, most of you who read my blog, it's beneath you. It's, it's stuff that you probably don't need anymore. Do you, are you guys, do you guys get this? I'm going to go into in a while about, about things you can do right now in order to get your business going. But I want you to first see, you probably don't need to be buying more make money online products. Now, where that might adjust is if you need support, if you need help, like from a coach, that might change if there are certain strategies that you want to learn and then you're going to actually do something with it or other things that support your goal. But going after just generic stuff that teaches people how to make money isn't really serving you and it's really not serving anybody after you've gone through one. It, it I mean, once you get that you can make money online, it's all, okay, what do I do with this? Rather than I'm going to buy a bunch of these. And that's the trap. Where it gets dangerous is where people get caught in a trap. They get caught in this buying cycle of they're buying more and more products and it doesn't really serve them. And then as soon as they get bored, they jump to the next one and they go through this model again and then they get burnt out and they spend a whole bunch of money. This might sound like someone you know. This might sound like most of the people who, who try to go after this. And I'm calling this out because I've done this. I still do it and I'm not killing off the things that I used to do, but I don't really want to do this anymore. I don't really want to be talking about if you know nothing, how to get started online. It's just not fulfilling to me anymore. Do you guys, do you guys have any questions about this? Now, this is, I actually, I want you to get this model because this is actually going to be important in a few slides when it comes to what you can do. There's a, there's, um, a quote from a buddy of mine, um, Justin Brook, where he says, he said this to me years ago. It was, I, it wasn't to me. It was, it was actually on a, on a call. He said, Stop doing what the gurus say and start doing what the gurus do. This is what the gurus do. This is, this is, and it's, these pricing models aren't always the same, but it is this process of getting leads, selling them something, and then selling them really expensive stuff afterwards and turning those leads into something that will support something else later. And, and I, again, do parts of this. I have some, I've had some products do this exact model. I've had some products do parts of this model. 
I want you to get this model because it's actually going to be important because this is what the gurus do. Do you see this? Give me a, a yes or a hashtag in the chat box if you get this. If not, let me know because I, this is important to get as we go through what it's actually going to mean for you. Tons of yeses. Okay, cool. Now, another reason I bring this up is because I want you to see that you already know enough. You you already you are if you are on this call or if you are watching this video or if you are reading my blog, you already know enough. Chances are because you're here. You've probably gone through this process as a customer, so you know enough to do some damage. Here's proof. My buddy Paul. Paul started as a customer of mine. And Paul is now a friend of mine, hung out with him several times, texted him this morning. We have a, a, a date on the phone tomorrow afternoon. He's one of the coaches inside of Freedom Fast Lane. And he took his model. He, he basically learned some stuff from, from uh, going through the buying process of seeing how internet marketing works. And he started sharing that with companies that didn't know how to market online. And now he's a rock star consultant for a bunch of companies. I, I want you guys to realize how valuable what you know is. And the reason I, I want you to get that is because if you recognize how valuable what you know is, that's going to make going after your goals a heck of a lot easier. There's, there's often this question of, I know what I want to go after. I'm not sure how I'm going to pay for it. Part of that bridge is realizing how valuable what you know is. What you've got between your two ears, just from watching this video, just from, from reading a couple blogs, is extremely valuable. And Paul took that, and he had some small niche sites that he practiced on, was making, doing okay, making a few bucks. But he really started to take off when he realized that offline companies would pay him thousands of dollars a month to do this for them. I had a call earlier this week with, with a friend of mine. His name is Mitch. Mitch is somebody I went to college with, and he literally heard me talk about my business in class once, came to my dorm room, got a crash course if, with like what I do online, and he started learning voraciously about how internet marketing works. He then... I, as far as I know, never made any money online himself, but right out of college, got a really awesome job working at a search engine optimization company. He called me this week and was like, look, I'm doing really well at my job. I now have clients of my own who pay me a lot of money. I don't want to do this anymore, and I'm looking to start a real business. And I just wanted to go through my model with you and, and tell you, get your feedback on it. I get calls like that all the time from people who have been like, I didn't do exactly what you said. I didn't do exactly what the model was, but I took what I knew and people are paying me a lot of money in order to do it for them. Now, Paul outsources all the work. So he is just the brains behind it. He then has outsourcers who actually do the implementation and he does very little work himself. And he takes that money and invests it into businesses that he's really passionate about. I'm telling you all this because I want you to see that what you know is is very valuable. Whether it, you know, I, I don't obviously there's a lot of you on this call, so I don't know each one of you individually. But you have knowledge just by understanding the model we went over on the last slide. That's extremely valuable to people. Paul did it, and and now has a six-figure income just working with a handful of clients, and it's mostly hands-off. He wakes up when he wants, makes food when he wants, and, and lives the freedom lifestyle by traveling and, and snowboarding and doing whatever he wants, doing living the life that he wants. And that's possible for each and every one of you. Again, Paul is one of our coaches. Paul is somebody that will, will if you want to learn his model, he'll work with you directly, again, for a dollar at freedomfastlane.com slash trial. So we have a rock star team of coaches who will actually work with you on this stuff. Now we went over um, we went over the model that most people in the internet marketing space use, 
How many of you have ever seen screenshots like this where it's like, this is how much money I make on ClickBank. This is, look at how, look how well I'm doing. Look, yeah, you guys have seen it. Well, most of these, I'm not saying all, they're, again, we're going to go over how to do this in other ways, but you guys have seen these screenshots. Most of these, most of the time, now again, not all the time, but much of the time, these screenshots are from people following the model that we went over earlier, where we're teaching something, and then we send them through an upsell path, and we get all our buddies to promote. Again, I, I don't. I'm sorry to beat a dead horse, but you need to get that model because it works. It works outside of that space, but a lot of the people that you see teaching this stuff are simply showing screenshots from when they had those products on ClickBank and they got all their buddies to mail. ClickBank has really uh, cracked down on that recently, thankfully, to kind of get people out of that. Charles says, what if you don't like the internet marketing niche? Well, great. I'm just, I want you to get that most of the screenshots that you see are people who are doing that. The reason I, there's this, um, there's this temptation, guys, where I made this blog post about it at freedomfastlane.com. In fact, I think it's at freedomfastlane.com slash success stacking. I think it's there. This is blog post that I made where, where I realized that all our brains know how to do is compare. That's all our brains know how to do. And so there's this temptation to, when we see screenshots like this, to compare ourselves with them, think they must be doing really well, think they must be really happy, and then we buy their products to be like them. And when we can't get it to work, we feel frustrated until we see the next one and then you buy it. What I want you to see is that you're just as good as them. I want you to see that the knowledge that you have is just as powerful. And I, I'm trying to be very transparent and honest in saying that I've been doing stuff like this for a long time and I don't want to do it anymore unless it's packaged around the idea of living the life of your dreams. It's the only way that, that, that I'll talk about this stuff anymore. I don't want to talk about like, here's how you make a million dollars online. I don't, I don't care anymore. Like I'm, I don't want to, I don't wake up in the morning and want to do that unless it's packaged around. Here's how you live the life that you want. And I want you to see that you're just as good as the people who teach this stuff. So that's the purpose of this slide. I'm not telling you you need to go sell, make money online products. I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to show you that as far as that topic goes, you know as much as them. What you might not have known is the model. The model of selling something, selling more stuff, and selling high price stuff on the back end. And that's going to be important again here in a second. It actually is relevant to living the life that you want. We'll get to it in like four slides. So just stick with me. It's going to make sense. Now, why do, why do some people do really well and some people never do anything? The answer to that is boredom. How many of you have gone through something and just gotten bored with it and you didn't want to do it anymore? That's kind of where I am with the business that I had been doing for a long time is I'm bored with it. And to be honest with you, it's suffered. Part of the reason we're having this call is because Brian and I had a chat late last week and he's like, yeah, man, I can tell that you've checked out. It's like, I can see it in your emails. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm just, I'm totally, I'm checked out. And I'm, I'm letting my employees run everything and I don't get excited to talk about this stuff and I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm bored. I don't know what's next, but I'm, I'm just bored. And that's, that's most people's experience when they're starting out. It's like they want to make money and they're like, well, this is boring and this sounds like work. So they never do anything. Raise your hand if that's ever been you. Brian, has that ever been you where you had a project and then you just, you got bored because you weren't passionate about it? Oh yeah, all the time that's happened to me. I mean, that's the uh, plight of the industry. And, and a lot of it, like what you're explaining, what you're trying to get rid of, a lot of people get sucked into that because you learn how to make money online from a less than $100 ClickBank ebook, and then the temptation is to immediately then, well, 
I guess I should go make a less than hundred dollar ebook yeah. thing too. Yeah. And it's uh it's really it's a it's a life sucking thing. Yeah, it's it it this cycle can really lead to a really dark place. Like I've been there where where like you just don't you're just bored and you don't want to do anymore and you get depressed. Like I spent mm-hmm. There was a, there was a two years ago it was the darkest time of my life where I just was, I was bored, and Tim Ferriss, he argues that boredom is the enemy of happiness, and I so get that, like I I can verify that's one hundred percent true, is boredom is the enemy of happiness and, um that's why he I love his message of that's why of planning what do you want to do with your time and then there's a way you can pay for it and and I I agree with him and I woke up you know a couple of weeks ago and was like I don't want to be doing this with my time if I'm not helping if I'm not inspiring people to live extraordinary lives then this then I need to cut it out I need to stop doing it all right so what's what's the solution to that is passion we all have something um, I know I'm cursing a lot on this call. Please forgive me, but there's, I, I brought up this video by Gary Vaynerchuk. Please go look it up on YouTube. Just look for Gary Vaynerchuk. It's like the third video. It's him talking at uh, a social media expo. And he says, look yourself in the mirror and ask, what do I want to do every day? And go do that. I promise you, you can monetize that shit. I promise you, you can monetize that shit. And it's true. Right now, I'm going through a bit of a of an adjustment in my life where I'm realizing the stuff I don't want to do, and I'm seeing a lot of stuff that I do want to do. I, I I want to be talking about freedom and lifestyle design. I want to be performing, and there's this gap. I don't know how I'm going to make it work yet. I'm not sure, but I know I can monetize that shit. For for example, uh, this is I I promise. Like I'm going to ask this question, but I'm going to put an asterisk by it. You don't have to give me any money. I have nothing to sell. But how many of you are more would be more likely to buy from me right now while I'm talking about something that I'm passionate about versus some of the other teachings that I've done where you, where you know I'm trying to sell something? How many of you are like connecting with me more now and trust me more now and would be willing to pull out your wallets and buy something right now more than on a webinar where I'm where you know that a pitch is coming. Mary says, I don't know, I always trusted you. Thank you, appreciate that. But there's like, I just got like 20 responses of, every, of people saying absolutely. That's, that is what I want you to get. If you're passionate about something, the money can show up if you go after it. Somebody, somebody commented on my blog at freedomfasting.com, I think it was late last night, they said, uh, it was, it was there's a, there was a post about happiness. It, it was a great post. Um, actually, it might be at freedomfasting.com slash happiness. I'm not sure. Or maybe gratitude. It's there right now. If you go to freedomfasting.com, there's a great blog post about happiness and gratitude. And somebody commented and said, well, money makes you happy because money gives you the ability to go after what you want. And I responded to that comment. I'd actually love it if you contributed to that conversation. I argued, no, you go after what you want first and the money shows up because you start to attract opportunities that allow you to monetize that passion. And so if you're not passionate about something, there's no reason for you to be spending time on it. If uh, I originally was going to make this call a lot about what doesn't work anymore. And I decided not to do that and do instead instead focus on what does work because I don't think you guys need to know all that stuff that doesn't work. But one thing that that does not work is going after is doing stuff that you're not passionate about. For example, when the internet was kind of this wide open west 5 years ago, there was this big push to make niche sites. And I did it too. 
and that doesn't work that well anymore. And part of the reason why it doesn't work anymore is because if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to make good content that ranks in the search engines and you're not going to put anything out there that anyone gives a crap about. So if you're, if you're making these niche sites that you don't really care about, I'm not surprised if you're not seeing results. What really matters is that there's passion behind what you're doing because you're more likely to follow through and there's going to be things and opportunities that show up as a result of you going after your passion. I promise you. And, I, and I'm saying that I'm also promising it to myself because like I, again, sorry to beat a dead horse, but I'm making this shift of I'm stopping doing what a lot of, of what I used to do. I'm not cutting it off. I, like there's people running it and that's fine. And they'll keep running it and that's okay. But my energy and my time is going after what I do want. And I know that it will show up and I'm, I'm sacrificing some in order to do that because I can't see what I'm going to gain. I just know what I'm giving up, but I know that things are going to come up and fill that space. I know it's going to, I know it. And the same thing is true for you. If you're going after that passion, things will show up. So let's go over, you guys want to go over a, a few ways that we can do that? Like a few ways that you can start to position yourself in your passion so that money starts to show up or you're at least in positions to show up. I've called them freedom business models, but really it's a way to position yourself so that your passions have the potential to be monetized. And I'm not going to, we, we can go in as deep as you want. I don't plan to, like, I don't, I have a, one slide for each and we can map some stuff out if you want, but I, we don't need to go into it too deep unless you want to. So you, is it, can we do that? Mary says, I have passion in three markets, I spent a lot of time writing. Okay, cool. Mary, I, I would, I'd be willing to go over what you're doing or if you want to hop on a call with any of the coaches at Freedom Fastlane, they would be able to help you look at what you're doing, what you're writing about, and help you to refine that so it's actually serving you and, and showing up. Brian and I love that stuff, is looking at what you're doing and refining it so that it's serving you. All right, let's go into these models. First one, um, I, I called it passion blogging. It's just what I came up with on a, on a whim. But keeping a... Keeping a blog about what you're passionate about opens up opportunities. I tell this story a lot. I tell it inside of the, the class I taught called Six Figure Blogging. It's at sixfigurebloggingclass.com if you want to get it. I tell the story about a girl that I dated that uh, she was really passionate about travel. And so she just started keeping this, this travel blog. And she started having other people contribute to her blog and was just doing it because she was passionate about it. And when she started doing it, she all of a sudden started getting this following. She, she started putting up YouTube videos and people started f finding her and people started going to her and saying, Hey, can I advertise on your site? Hey, can I send you stuff to review? Can I send you free stuff? Hey, can we send you on this free trip? All of a sudden it just started to show up just because she was putting out decent stuff just because she was sharing her experience. I think right now she has like 900 likes on Facebook. She's getting close to that, that thousand person threshold. And it's just, it's something that she works on maybe two hours a week. It's something that is just in the, she doesn't really think about it. It's just something that she does as a hobby, but money is starting to show up. Opportunities start to show up and she enjoys it immensely. She's out living the lifestyle. She's out traveling and sometimes she blogs about it. If you were actually to do it regularly, it, it happens much faster. Now, I, um, I'm going to show you a couple examples. I didn't plan to do this, but let's go through a couple examples. By the way, my homepage is this article right here. Uh, you can Google it. It's called Top 5 Regrets of the Dying. I put this as my homepage because I, I want to remind myself what people who are on their deathbed say about life. Um, whoop, no, I don't need to update my flash player. And real quick, just for fun, the, the five things I wish, number one, I wish I'd had the courage to live life true to myself, not the life that others expected of me. Wow. Number two, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. 
Number three, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Number four, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Number five, I wish I had let myself be happier. This is inspiring to me, is my homepage, because I want to remind myself of this. This is one of those things that, like, if I am if I get away from this, I have to stop for a second and think, am I living the life that I'm meant to live? That's, I mean, that's, that's heavy shit. That's life-changing stuff. All right. Uh, sorry, I went on a rant there. Let's look at some examples of passion blogging. This is a personal friend of mine. Love him to death, and I love his model. JordanGrayConsulting.com. You guys can follow along with me if you want. Again, this is a personal friend of mine. Uh, just love his model. This is – Jordan is a relationship coach. He works with men to help them – what he calls – work out their mental knots that they have around relationships. He's somebody I trust. He's somebody I love on this topic. I could listen to him talk about it all day and he could talk about it all day. He's a really inspiring guy to me and he's my age. Um, and he keeps a blog that he just shares on Facebook and with his network about, about his philosophy of dating. And check out what he's doing. For example, this is one that he posted today. I read it today about the myth of nice guys finish last. Check this out. I, he posted it this morning and he just shared it on Facebook. He's got 81 likes and he's probably got a bunch of opt-ins here on the right of people who are going to go through, probably buy his products, buy his books, and he has best sellers on Amazon and he didn't even intend to do that. He didn't know anything about selling on Amazon. He just started to put out good stuff and it started to show up and people started to follow him and he started get, getting this following. Jordan wasn't a rich guy. He didn't have a name in the industry. He just started sharing what he was knowledgeable about and what he was really passionate about, sharing it on his network and the network started to grow. Now, how does he monetize this? He monetizes it in a couple ways. When he builds this email list and this email list starts to buy his stuff. That's how I made my first hundred thousand dollars is I started getting people on a list from stuff I was sharing and then they bought my products later. That's how I made a lot of my money. That's how Brian has made a lot of his money is by people read your stuff. They opt in. They want more from you and your good stuff starts to spread. Again, uh, this had 13 likes when I checked it this morning, when I read it myself, I think I'm one of these likes. And now there's 81 a few hours later because it's just a great article and somebody says, hey, I want to share this with my network. I'm going to post this on Facebook. This is great information. That makes sense. It's slow at first. And we like I go over some strategies inside of the product that I made, which again, you can get if you want. It's at sixfigurebloggingclass.com. I would go over some strategies of how you can get over that hump of when it's slow, how to get people to share it so that you're building up that network. But once it starts to take off, it really starts to take off. Now, here's another interesting way that he monetizes it. Let's see if I can find it on here. Um, let's go back to the home page. He has a page. This might be it. He does, yeah, this is it. He does coaching and he charges like $100 an hour or $200 an hour. And he, yeah, here you go. $100 for an hour, $500 for three hours or $1,500 for ends up being like eight hours or something. And he works with people directly and that's how he makes some of his money. He also has book sales. He also has his email list. And he's the only one writing on here. The results would be even faster if you had a team of people writing for you on the topic. You guys seeing this, how when you put out good stuff, people show up. You can operate in your passion and it starts to show up. Now, I know personally that for Jordan, it was slow. Like He didn't have a blog that looked this nice when he started. He didn't have regular clients when he first started. He, he just started to do it and it started to show up and eventually he was able to quit his job. He he travels a lot now and he makes a full-time income just doing this. Another one of my friends, his name is Dan, 
We run a podcast together, which by the way, if you didn't know I had a podcast, go on iTunes and subscribe and, uh, and start, start listening to my podcast. I do it with my friend, Dan. He, um, he literally just went for it, quit his job and they get this, put it on Facebook. He said, I'm going to learn to be a copywriter. I don't know copy yet, but I'm going to learn. Anybody want to book me? Basically, he wrote a post about what he wanted to do with his life and how and how he was going to pay for it being a copywriter. And he got clients that day who were like, yes, I want to book you. And, he's, and all of a sudden, he's got money coming in. And as he learns and practices and gets better, it starts to build and build and build. Part of Part of what you can do to start moving towards a life that you want is to announce it. That's part of the reason I'm having this call is because I'm now I'm announcing the way that I'm moving away from the old way and moving into talking about what I'm really passionate about. And I'm in my personal life adjusting some things so that I'm doing more of what I want and less of what I don't want. And Jordan did that. This is an example of one way that you can do it. Whew. I'm a, <laughs> I'm going. All right. I'm just, are there any other examples? I mean, Brian, you did this. You, you yep. just started putting out stuff and then you started taking on coaching clients. You started releasing some products and it's still growing for you. Yep. So relatively new and uh, that's the best way to do it, man. All right. Do you guys want me to go into this any deeper? Do you guys have any questions about this? I want to get to the other models too. But one of the things you can do is just start putting out good stuff. And it, I promise you, it just starts to show up. If, you're, if you are passionate about something, if you're really good at something, I promise you it shows up. But you've got to be passionate. You've got to love it. Or else you're not going to be able to get over that hump. Gary Vaynerchuk says, Make a list of 100 things that you can talk about on your topic. If you can't come up with 50 or 100, you're probably not passionate about it. If you can easily talk about something all day, I promise you, like you're my ideal person that I want to work with. I promise you there is stuff that you can do if you can talk about something all day. If you are passionate about something, I should really have a product called Passion into Profits. I should really make that. Um, maybe I will. Like, it's just if you are passionate about something, I promise you that you can have a six-figure business. Promise. Scout's honor. In the, in the video, again, I mentioned like four times, in the video that Gary Vanderjeck did in 2008, he, I love this quote. It's one of my favorite videos. That's why I keep bringing it up. He says, if you love Elf, start an Elf blog. If you love Smurfs, Smurf it up. Whatever you're passionate about, go do that. I promise you, you can monetize it. Okay, a couple. Yes, Brian. Well, I I don't know like your flow here. I don't want to interrupt you because you might have a lot of stuff to cover. I don't still. know my flow either. I'm just ranting. Okay, good. So, um, the uh, DB. I don't know their name, but the initial DB just asked like I think what I think is the real question a lot of people struggle with. They say I feel like the fire has gone out. Nothing excites me. Where do I look for my passion? And I can identify with that a lot. Um, when you think you're passionate about something for a time and then burnout happens, um, you feel there's the, like, a really hopeless place to be is what do I get passionate about? Mm -hmm. And the, let's call it mind trash, head trash, that often accompanies those feelings is I would be passionate about this, but... yeah. I can't do what you just said and, and come up with a hundred things to talk about. So we we have all these things about why we can't start over. Um, do you have do you have anything readily there you can draw with? And that I can draw with? Yeah, like for like a little diagram. <laughs> <laughs> like bubble dot us. Uh, no, not that kind of drawing. Um, like paint. I have, I have paint. Um, <laughs> I'm on a Mac, so we're too good for paint. Oh, man. <laughs> Anybody okay, know so, that I can use uh, to draw something? Go, keep going, Brian. 
Well, so I just kind of, one thing I wanted to just hopefully visually show if we can figure out a way to draw it. Um, I'll try to describe it, but I'm a visual learner, so um, finding that bullseye, like what do I go and do this about? I'd like to just take what Ryan's been saying and add to it. Um, not take away because everything you, you've said so far is awesome, but adding to it maybe for clarification on the emotion DB just described. Where do I look for my passion? If you you know what a Venn diagram is, yeah, um, you can all picture that. Now add a third circle. Okay, so a Venn diagram with three circles overlapping. Okay. So let's say what Ryan's been talking about is passion. And in your mind's eye, I want you to put that in the upper left-hand circle. Okay? So say you've got three circles overlapping. Upper left-hand circle is passion. And the right-hand circle puts strength. Mm. And there's a little bit of a difference between passion and strength because I have strengths in things I'm not passionate about. Amen. Um, and I have passion for things I have no strength in. And like I was funny, I was talking to my friend Paul, who's in his 30s and he's still not married, and he's looking for you know, he's just constantly asking me about a new girl that maybe he should pursue. <laughs> and I always ask him, it's like, what well, is she also interested in you? Because it's one <laughs> thing to be passionate about someone or something, but uh, you've you've also got to have an in. You know, That's a, a great strength, analogy. So That's a great analogy. All right, so let's take those two circles. On the left, you've got passion. On the right, you have strength. And then that third circle in the middle at the bottom, if you have like a triangle set up with your three circles. I hope everybody's following the visual with no visual. I'm with you. Um, in that circle, put opportunity. And that, that sweet spot where your passion or – and this is kind of where I want to touch on the answer to this question of where do I look for my passion. A, a passion business doesn't necessarily mean that it's the most passionate thing. Um, for example, I am most passionate about teaching the Bible. That just so happens to not come with a paycheck um, unless I decided to go pastor and start a church somewhere. And so I, for my business... I do something I'm highly interested in, something that I don't want to beat my head against a wall doing. Um, and maybe one day I will be a full-time teacher. Uh, but for now, so in my, left, my top left-hand circle is, uh, let's just say, consulting. Okay. Now, on the right-hand side, I've got to mix that with my strength. So something that people say I'm good at, something that comes to me maybe a little bit more naturally than the average person. Maybe I have an affinity for it and a little bit of experience from a past job that I've had. I don't know. So there's two things overlapping there. There's a, a, an extreme interest at least. I enjoy it. Maybe it's not what I'm created to do yet, but I do love it. I have some level of passion. On the right-hand side, I also look for an area where strength overlaps that. And then the third piece that kind of puts it together is that opportunity where there are people lacking the other two circles but know that they need them. Mm. And so people that you can help. And if you were to take any genre of market, we could fill in hypothetical circles here of where do you look for that sweet spot? Where's the sweet spot? Where's the passion? Where do you apply what Ryan's talking about? That's just something to think through. It's not an end-all, be-all, but you know, the most often asked question ever in uh, counseling in a, in a church scenario, Ryan, you could probably guess this, what's the most popular question people ask about God? Um, they ask, what is his will for me? And people want to do what they're made to do. They, they are worried that they're going to miss out on it. Um, that being said, I think even in a non-religious context, in the secular world out there, people are asking the same question with different words, and they're asking that question 
in a form of maybe like, where do, what do I look for my passion? What am I supposed to be doing? Yeah. Um, and answering that is really is really something that you've got to work through. I don't think that necessarily Ryan or I could tell you what you should be doing, but tools like the ones I just laid out for you are helpful to kind of just start feeling it out. You know, like um, if if you can pursue that area where there's a, a a high interest, if not, if you can't use the word passion, then at least you should be highly interested. Enjoy it, uh, and then it overlaps with something you're naturally good at, or you've a acquired some strengths in. Uh, and then there's also an opportunity in the market for that slant. I think that's a sweet spot to focus on. So sorry for uh, jumping in there for more than a second, but. Uh, that question, it just it really resonates, I think, not only with me, but everybody on the call. Uh, where do I look for my passion? Because this is great. I agree with it. I wish I could just do what I love to do. Problem is, I don't know what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And um, so hopefully that's helpful. What, one thing that I, I ask, sometimes you just have to get away in order, you have to get away from every day in order for the real you to come out. Sometimes I have to go on a trip for the real me to come out, and that's where I make my best decisions. And when things are, I, there's a book called uh, Three Feet from Gold that was written by a friend of mine, Greg Reed, and he he makes this is really good advice to make decisions when things are going well in your life rather than when they're not going well. Because when things are going well, you tend to think from a place of abundance. And those are the best decisions that you make is when you can see something clearly and, and you know what you want to go after rather than being in a, a bad place. Now, there's ways that you can get into a good place emotionally if things aren't going your way. I, I did a blog post this week about a strategy I use called success stacking where I, I just start stringing little successes together. And that will get me thinking in a positive place again, and I'm in a better place to do work and to make decisions. Chances are there's times throughout your month and times throughout the year where you know you're passionate about something, but there are times that the fire is gone and you're not sure what to do. And I get that, but I think you think about it better when you're mm -hmm. in that place where the day-to-day -day stuff is not bogging you down all day. That's a really good point because just because the fire's gone out doesn't mean that you don't have a passion there. You know, I mean, even like in a marriage, <laughs> I mean, I married someone I'm passionate about, but absolutely, if I'm honest, we've gone through rough patches where it's like, man, you're annoying the heck out of me today, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and more so my way towards her, annoying her. But, uh, you know, getting maybe taking a break sometimes can be a good solution for dealing with burnout. Yeah. And if you made decisions at a bad point in your marriage, that would probably not reach the goal that you wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, passion and knowing what to do. But, like, for example, like you're, what you're going through right now, and I know you're just kind of like transparently laying your heart out in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> um, but, like, you're passionate about freedom, you have a strength when it comes to making money online. And there also happens to be opportunity yeah. to teach people that. And that's why you've really flourished in it. And the fire's gone out recently and that maybe because operating solely from the strength and the, the passion kind of not being the main focus, uh, which is freedom, you know what I mean? Right. And you're trying to get back to that circle, so to speak, so that the sweet spot doesn't get imbalanced a little bit. but. Uh, teaching people how to get to that free that that freedom using your strengths uh, where there's opportunity. I know that whatever that turns out being, all of us are watching with bated breath to see what you come out with because we know it's going to be fantastic. Um, but we know it's not going to be too far off of where those things converge. And um, excited to see where you go with it. Thanks, man. Now, one of the things I want to add to what you just said, and then we're, then we got to move on, is that. Um, you mentioned it doesn't have to be like your number one passion, what you monetize. For example, yours is teaching the Bible. One, one thing to note is when you have a freedom business that's paying for your life, all of a sudden you have the time 
to go spend as much time as you want in your other passions. And, and we're talking about passion blogging right now, but so if you can monetize your primary passions, sure. but, but also you can go after what you want and just have a business that pays for it. So if you have, if you have a freedom business, you also can spend your time doing what you really love. Brian, you do this. You do teach Bible classes. In fact, I believe you have one of the fastest growing or biggest Bible studies in in your state because you get to spend your time doing that while your freedom business pays for your life and you know how you're going to eat. You know, I can't, I can't say biggest in the state by far. Um, Virginia is pretty big, but I will say you know, we, we've been blessed. There's a lot of people coming, but what, what I'll pull out, pull out from it, uh, not to take any credit away from what, you know, I, obviously I give the Lord credit, but I, I do, that midweek study for people in their 20s and 30s and I do it for free and I put in you know just none of them are on this call so I can say it <laughs> but I, I usually put in about 10 to 12 hours a week preparing for that and then I go and I do it for free and from a time commitment and then outside you know counseling with people and stuff I've got a part-time job worth of time commitment that I don't get paid for but I happily do it anyway, and I feel like some of some of the, the you can say success or whatever you want to call it. Obviously, numbers don't necessarily dictate success with that kind of thing. But I'm doing something I would do for free, for free, and people are coming. Yeah. And and so you know, what what would you do for free if you yeah. never got paid? Sure. What would you what would you do if if you had all the money that you needed? What would you do with your time? That's a really good place to start. It's a really good place. I ask myself that question all the time. And I'm and I and I started to see that the answers didn't match what I was doing and therefore a change needed to happen. Um I Brian, I could we could talk about this all day, but we should forever, be. sure. Yeah. Gotcha. So let's, since we've been ranting for a while, let's get the energy up a bit. Let's do a free giveaway. I'm going to give away a free copy of my book right now. Save you a whole dollar ninety nine, And let's do this. One of my passions is, and one of the goals that I set for this year was to get on and win a reality show. I came very close this year to getting on a reality show. I was a finalist and at the last minute. Someone else was chosen over me. To the first person who posts in the chat box, I'll give a free copy to my book if they can ask the question, what reality show was I almost <laughs> on? It looks like that's Chris a clear winner. Chris <laughs> got it. The correct answer is Big Brother. Big, the answer is Big Brother. Chris M. got it. Chris, enter your email address into the chat box, and I will zip you a copy of my book, The Freedom Manifesto. Uh, the story there, yes, I was – Almost on Big Brother, like I mean, inches away. It's it's airing right now. I'm glad. I'm actually glad I'm not on it. It's, uh, just watching what has happened uh, to some of the people on this season, and also just I needed to go through some changes in my life while I wasn't on TV. So, but yeah, I was almost on Big Brother. It's a great story, actually. And Chris, I will uh, I will shoot you a copy of my book. For those of you who don't know, my dream is actually I. I love I love that show, but I my real dream is I've always wanted to be on Survivor, and so I'm gonna keep trying. If any of you know anybody who can help me get on Survivor, please let me know. <laughs> I'm actually surprised to hear the Big Brother thing. I thought for sure it was Survivor. Oh yeah, I was I was I just I I like Big Brother too. It's and it you know, it's strategy without having to be on an island somewhere and starving. So I threw my hat in the ring, and a month later I was being flown out to L.A. But anyway. Um, Chris, congratulations. I'll shoot you a copy of my book to your email address. There'll be one other opportunity to have a free, to have a, uh, a, uh, a free copy of my book here coming up. Now let's move on. Let's say that you're passionate about something, but you don't know, you can't write about it all the time. You don't want to do coaching. You don't want to be doing this active work in your business. Let's talk about Publishing products, product publishing. Does anybody know who this person is on my screen? He's a classic example. He's also a personal friend of mine. Um, do you guys know who this person is? Anybody? Brian, I know you do. 
I think I do. Yeah. It's like the classic example. Is well, I don't want to tell everybody. The L A says the ab guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. And right. Edmund says a marketer. <laughs> <laughs> Both are right. <laughs> yeah, right. So this is this is Mike Geary. Mike owns the website thetruthaboutabs.com. Now the story be <laughs> sorry, Roger's making me laugh. Roger put Singfried C Sigalowski the third. That's who that is. Uh, close, but no. Uh, thanks. That made me laugh. The story behind Mike, and again, Mike's a personal friend of mine. He's a great guy, and Mike is a per was a personal trainer. He was passionate about health and fitness, and he made a product about health and fitness. He made it was actually about it was it was about uh, losing fat so that you could have six pack abs. And he had the product. It was a book. He wrote it, and two years it sat on his hard drive. For two years, he did nothing with it. I'm bringing up this example in this story because Mike's a lot like those of you who are, who are on this call. He had a passion. He wrote about it, and it sat on his hard drive for years. Then he, he bought a course about copywriting, and he wrote, he wrote a sales letter. There's an example of something that's a skill that you can learn that's not just how to make money online. He bought something that served his business and he threw up a sales letter and he started to make some sales. Then he started to grow it a little bit by a little bit by a little bit by a little bit until three years later, he had a, a million dollar plus business per year. Then he started meeting people who would support that, affiliates, people who would help him buy traffic people who would help him with his conversions. And it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew until he had a multi-million dollar business. And now he spends his time doing what he wants. Now, a lot of that is in business. He's an investor in things now. He still refines his skills of internet marketing. He travels a lot. He snowboards. He hangs out with, with, with me in California. We got we dinner together once in California. He, uh, he's a great guy. And his story isn't all that like it's it's not like an overnight success story. He just had something, he built on it a little bit and built and built and built until eventually it was a million dollar business. And that and now it's a huge multi-million dollar business. He does he does great. That is a lot of you. You have a passion, you can put something together and start to grow it. This is the model, this is this model. This is the model that you guys think only works in internet marketing, but actually works in every single market. Our buddy Travis Sago sent an email to his list yesterday in which he said, I was just uh, at this conference and noticed that, and I met all these people who are in obscure markets, obscure niches, where they have products and they're selling really well, serving that market with a product. There are six-figure businesses, six-figure markets, seven-figure markets in whatever you are passionate about. Because whatever you're passionate about, there's lots of other people too. Now, just so you know, when I say publishing products, it doesn't have to be you that made the product. I really like the marketing behind things. So my dream business is to meet people who are passionate about something and help them craft a message around that and then sell the product, help them create the sales channels for that. That's like my, my dream business is that type of a publishing company that publishes those products and, uh, and, it's in, and we're in a lot of different markets. Whatever you're passionate about, you can make a product about that that does really well. And it doesn't even have to be, first of all, it doesn't have to be a, pro, a, a book. It can be someone talking in a microphone for an hour. It can be videos. It can be whatever you want it to be. And it also doesn't have to be you. It can be you doing the marketing and somebody else making the content or vice versa. Some of the best relationships and best businesses I've seen have been between somebody who's passionate about something and somebody who does marketing. Those are some of the, the, the best relationships that I see. In fact, Steve Jobs had that relationship when he launched Apple. Steve Jobs was the marketer. Somebody else came up with the platform and he sold it and he ended up becoming the face of it. So it doesn't have to be you. Now that is, again, that is this model. It's coming up with a, a, a sales letter that converts, 
with one other way to make money, some sort of an upsell, and affiliates can promote that. If you're blogging, your audience will buy that. You can combine those first two models. You can have, you can have a blog that also sells products. And on the flip side, you can have just a product and be networked with bloggers who sell your stuff as an affiliate. It's a great way to get your first affiliates is to go after bloggers who are passionate about, about stuff enough to be talking about it and to have an audience and get them to promote your product as an affiliate. Any questions about the second model? Anything you want me to go over in more depth? No? Okay, cool. Whoa, nobody asked a question, so we need to get the energy up. All right, free book giveaway number two. Let's do this. Since we're talking about passion, what sports team am I most passionate about? This is an easy one. Oh, Edwin says the Celtics. No, Rich, Rich Almarez got it. That was quick. And Chris M is my man. He was number two. Rich Almarez got it. The Cleveland Indians are my favorite sports team. Um, they, they're, they're my girlfriend. The Cleveland Indians are my girlfriend. So Rich, do me a favor. Let's put your email address in the chat box and I'll zip over a free copy of my book, The Freedom Manifesto. Thank you, sir. Edwin says, who? You jerk. <laughs> By the way, uh, if you guys like this stuff, I, I go into a lot of detail about it in my book, Freedom Manifesto. A couple free copies being given away, but it's $1.99 on Amazon. Leave me a review. By the way, Chris Chris, and uh, and Rich, will you, guys, will you guys leave me a review on Amazon? Is that cool if I ask for that in exchange for free? Just Thanks, guys. They say sure. Okay. Okay, there are no questions about this model, so let's move on. Let's move on to the third one. Now, the third one I'm including in here because this is something that, first of all, I'm doing, and second of all, this is something that anyone can do, and it doesn't have to be a passion business. So if you just want a business that supports your lifestyle, then this is one that can do it. Now, this is becoming hot right now because one of my best friends, Matt Clark, I work out of his office a few days a week, actually. He was in Thailand with me. He teaches this stuff, and he is a freaking rock star at it. And it's simply selling real products on Amazon. Do you guys want to go into details about this, or do you just want me to talk about like general theory and stuff? Because like I do this stuff, and I know some of the tactics, but I, like, all right, I just got a big yes from David Fairbanks and Marcos and Todd. All right, okay, so we can go into this. I'll, I'll I'll go into I'll start to go into it if you guys want to go into it deeper we can, or or we can just leave it surface level. I'll just decide based on the the questions that you've got. Um, so where should we start? Let's go to Amazon. First of all, if are, have any of you sold stuff on Amazon as an affiliate or as a product vendor before, or drop shipping? Like I had a I had friends in college. They would come to me, I'd teach them about drop shipping, and they would do that. Okay, most of you are saying no. A couple of you said yes. All right, so um, how, do, how do I explain this? Back when, when drop shipping was really hot, like back in the mid to late 2000s, there was – Everybody was trying to sell hot Apple products. It was like, I want to sell iPods. I want to sell MacBooks. I want to sell whatever's hot. And that was a mistake because there was no margins in that. In fact, people who would come to me for advice and I'd tell them, they'd go back and be like, hey, man, I found a supplier for iPods, but it's the same price on eBay. There's no money in this. That was the wrong approach. And they'll probably go to jail because <laughs> the, the person claiming to be a manufacturer is a knockoff in China. So. <laughs> True. So, <laughs> so the the switch here, the difference, is to sell stuff that's easy to as like an accessory. So what I would tell people, like if you're set on selling iPods, which I hope you're not, but sell chargers, sell um, covers. MacBook covers, iPad cases, iPad covers, 
sell um, connection cords. In the same way, things like uh, if you're passionate about cooking, you don't even have to be passionate about cooking, but it's, like you don't want to go and sell a, you don't want to try and, and be a manufacturer for what's the um, the Bre Breville juicer. Breville is a popular brand. What's the blender? The oh, Vitamix. Vitamix, yeah. So plenty of people would be like, I want to sell Vitamix blenders. Well, you can, but it's easier for you to think of other similar things that that have no a lot of not a lot of branding behind it. Things like I don't I don't know what the example might be for for blenders, but it's it's like what what other things does that person buy that isn't a specific brand? That that is not what you go for on something like Amazon. So if we go after, if we just Google, um, oops, goo.com, if we just go and we say um, Amazon uh, best kitchen sellers, here we, go, here we go, kitchen and dining, like we can look at a list of the things that are are selling really well on Amazon. These two right here are a great example. The, this the storage containers and this hand mixer like this uh the blender bottle great example this right here a water filter not bad what you don't want to be selling is like a specific product like a breville juicer you don't want to be selling that you want, the reason for this is because the way you make a lot of money on amazon is by is by getting whole creating your own brand of something of uh uh, and and be and selling that on Amazon. For example, I was doing research, and I'm probably going to be working with a friend of mine on his business. He wants to be doing something. I don't want to give away his market, but I'll just I'll give you one of the things that we notice in his market. He, he wants to be doing um. Uh, how do I do it without giving away his market? I just want to respect his market. Um, it's in the fitness space, a specific type of fitness. Uh, so for example, uh, you guys have heard of CrossFit. What do CrossFitters buy? They buy things like uh, foam rollers. They buy things like certain types of weights. They buy certain foods. They buy certain types of equipment. That's a market you can serve, where, where you can, uh, where you can easily find wholesale products that you create a brand around that get put on Amazon. I think uh, the word you're looking for is paraphernalia. Yeah, is that that's a good for? word for it. It's a good word for it. Question from Mary, why things without branding? The reason now if you're selling something as an affiliate, Mary, if you're selling it as an affiliate, you can sell stuff that's branded. But if you're if you want to sell on Amazon, you want to sell your own brand. You want to sell stuff that you can brand. It's your business. It's your lifestyle business. So so selling it on Amazon, you don't want to be selling other people's products. You want to be selling your own. And the way you do that is by finding suppliers for those items and creating your own brand that you end up putting on Amazon. Mary says, oh, I see. Liz's comment made me laugh. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> she said, <laughs> CrossFit, she heard cross dressers. <laughs> CrossFit's a type of fitness, just for the record. Yeah, we thought big shoes. Um, so... I don't know how much deeper you want, to go, want me to go into this, but like one of the places where you can find – you can Google a product and wholesalers and start working with wholesalers. Another thing you can do is go to Alibaba.com. I have used Alibaba.com to buy products, and Brian, I think you have too. Oh, yeah. I'm doing a lot of it right now actually. I'm making my own uh, bass fishing tackle brand. Awesome. So, Beautiful. Yeah. So I'm trying to show you Alibaba.com and see if there we go. But you can search for whatever you want. Like uh, someone give me a market so, or a product or something. How, let's, let's just break down like, like what you're talking about. Okay, so you're talking about we're going to find a market based on something that's selling really popularly, like it's selling like crazy, mm -hmm. and we're going to look for paraphernalia that we can create a line of products surrounding it. And feed off of that um, momentum that that product's already made in the marketplace. Yep. 
by selling like supplemental things to enhance that product, right? So, exactly. okay, so let's just take something that's like crazy popular. Um, really and like the that Charles just put in the in the chat box. Can we use that? Uh, Charles dog beds. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of ways to slice this thing. Um, what I, what I was gathering, what you were teaching, was more like take a big brand and then feed off of it with paraphernalia. Uh, well, he, I'm what I'm. I mean, that works. That's fine. I, I don't think you have to base it off of a big brand. I no, think, you don't. That's why I say there's a lot of ways to go this way, this yeah, yeah, physical yeah. product route. But I so forgive me if I if I if I made it seem like I don't I don't think you need to go after a big brand and find something similar. I I think you go after a big market, see what's selling, and find what's easy to wholesale in that space. Is that clearer? Gotcha. Yeah. No, there's tons of ways to pick a market. I mean, yeah. that's probably an easy way to go but sure we can take dog beds right, right. So, so i don't know if this is going to be a good example or not I, I don't know this market but if we put dog beds into alibaba my guess is you're going to find plenty of suppliers for this yeah we got fur dog beds this is a memory foam this is what i was thinking of like was these memory foam uh dog beds check this out you buy them for five to twenty dollars a piece. Now you can you can order samples. By the way, you can order samples of these and get them sent to you. You'd have to pay for them, and this business model will take some investment because usually the minimum order on something like this is is fifty to hundred, very minimum. So it's going to cost several hundred dollars to to test this. And by the way, if you can start a business for under a thousand dollars. That's great, and this is exactly that. You can order enough product for under a thousand dollars to get some testing going. So now let's let's look over on Amazon. I don't know what's popular, and I'm trying to get cliff notes here so you guys know. If we type dog beds into Amazon, what's going to come up? Come on, connection. All right, so. Some of these dog beds are like thirty-four dollars, thirty-seven dollars. Um, Probably not like a huge thing to get into. Yeah, I I thought that um, I feel like there's got to be like there's got to be higher priced. But take take a look at this. Look at how many reviews these have. So these are really popular items, and I'm guessing. I feel like. There's some for sixty dollars, sixty dollars, forty dollars. So some of these are. So let's take this. This is a good example. This is a fifty-five, fifty-seven dollar dog bed. Uh, looks looks like a, the memory foam one ish. Here's one that was. Here's the memory foam one. Fifty dollars, hundred thirty-nine reviews. So it's got some traction. It's got a decent market. And over on Alibaba, you're buying them for five to twenty dollars a piece. You're gonna want to at least double that for your total cost of like shipping and listing on Amazon and stuff. So let's say you got them for twenty-five dollars a piece out the door. You'd have to sell it for fifty to make a two times profit. I know I'm oversimplifying this stuff, trying to give you cliff notes, but that's how right, yeah. it works. That's very like like top level. Yeah. Like this is what the model looks like there's more to it we don't have to, we've been on here for like an hour and 50 minutes yeah maybe we can do another <laughs> another webinar teaching this yeah maybe we can do some blog posts or something about it the guy sure. look one of my best friends matt clark is a rock star um i promote his stuff as an affiliate he doesn't sell his stuff often i'll promote it next time as an affiliate again and if this is a model that you want i'd really recommend that you buy his stuff when it's open and again uh, I'll probably have some sort of bonus next time he offers it or something, but you can't buy it right now. But this is this is a model that I really like and I follow and am making money with doing this stuff. All right, um, let's let's keep going. Sure. I want to wrap up here. I said this at the beginning of the call. It's not how much money you make, but it's what you do with your time that makes you happy. All that money does, all that money should do 
is open up the opportunities of how you want to spend your time. Of what emotions do you want to feel? Your life is the sum of your emotions. Your happiness, it all comes down to the emotions that you feel. Why do people want to be in love? Because of the emotion. Why do people want to make money? Because of the emotions that they'll get as a result. Why do people want children? It's because of the emotions that they feel. Your life is a, a sum of your emotions. That, that's all that happiness and, and your life quality is. It's the, your quality of your emotions is the quality of your life. And so money is a tool to allow you to experience those emotions on a more regular basis. That's what, that's what money is. And, and I made this call because I, I was starting to realize that my emotions were crap as a result of, because I wasn't happy with what I'm doing. And part of, and part of why I'm doing this call is because I, this is the stuff I love talking about. And I want to know if this is helpful. This is me kind of testing the waters a little bit. And, and I want your feedback really on, on is this, is this more helpful than just talking about making money online? Is there, a, is there a market for me to be talking about this stuff on a regular basis, talking about going after what you want, how you can pay for it? A lot of people are saying yes. If, if anyone would say no, I would really like, oh, shoot. Um, really great question from Liz Collier. Collier uh, Liz, thank you. Uh, real fast, back to that third model of Amazon. So do you end up with these items in your garage and then have to ship them? No, thank you so much. That would be the most nightmarish business of my life if I had to do that. No, Amazon does all the fulfillment for you. There's a service called Fulfillment by Amazon. They take 15% of the sales price. So, so that's their fee. So you have to work that fee into your pricing. But what happens is, you do an order with your supplier. They ship it right to Amazon. Amazon stores it. When you get an order, Amazon fulfills it. They do the customer service. They do everything. Your only job is to produce sales. Your only job is to have an attractive enough listing in order to, to get, people, uh, get, get people buying and to work on your rankings. You do like end up doing search engine optimization for your Amazon listing. Yeah, we could go into this more, but no, you don't have to store things in your garage. I would want to blow my brains out if I had to do that. Roger said, I had 500 fireplaces in my garage and I was trying to sell on eBay. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You can ship it right to Amazon and Amazon will do all the fulfillment. In fact, I know people who will actually sell other places besides Amazon, but they still use Amazon for their fulfillment. So it's called Fulfilled by Amazon. You can Google it and sign up with them. I think it's there's a $35 fee per month plus 15% of your sales price. I might be a little bit off on those numbers. Okay, now back to, back to my question. I'm putting all this out there because I, I want to be talking about this more. I don't want to just be talking about strategies for making money online anymore. I'm burnt out on it. it do, I don't, I don't want to keep doing it. And I don't know if there's, I don't know what it looks like for me to be teaching this kind of stuff on a regular basis. And so I'm testing the waters and there's some things I have ideas for, but I don't know if they're going to work. And so if this is helpful, I would really like your feedback on talking about this stuff. You guys did say that, um, you did say that you'd be more willing to buy from somebody like me who's passionate about talking and talking about this stuff rather than, um, rather than just peddling make money online products. That's really good news. So <laughs> Roger says, what about strategies for losing money online? Uh, that's actually, I would, I'll probably have a call someday about how I lost a lot of money doing some things wrong this year. That might be an interesting call, but I would really like your feedback. So this is the interaction time. Is there a way, is there a way that I can help? Do these calls help? Do, does, do what, what types of things would be helpful um, for me to be talking about or blogging about? You guys are saying this is great. This is great. 
Charles says, if you could, how do you get someone to stop those and focus, stop all those funnels? I don't understand completely what, what you're saying, Charles. I'm saying if you could figure out how to get everybody out of the trap of the affiliates mailing them to a sales video and get them to stop and focus and do something, then you'd have us all, that's what he says. So he, he's saying freedom resonating with him, um, help him get it. So uh, I, I think the, the message is really resonating from everything I see about why it's important to do this stuff. So A great, a great comment from Christine. Christine says, I have so many ideas, but I don't know which ones to focus on. Boy, do I get that, and so does Brian. We all get that. There's a great chapter of the book, Predictably Irrational. I'm not saying you have to go read a book. I'm going to summarize one big takeaway from it. Inside of Predictably Irrational, he talks about how – it's a book on psychology and why we do the things we do. And he he says that every, we – there's this chapter about um, people and options and keeping their options open. And they did this experiment actually with, uh, I won't get into it, but to test people and, and options. And what they discovered is that we want op like we want to keep options open, but the more options that we have, the worst results that we see because we dilute our focus. He argues that the best thing that we can do is eliminate options if we want to inspire action. So, so, Christine, if you've got a lot of ideas, write them all down and start crossing them off. Just start crossing them off. Narrow them down to like two or three and then hop on a call with one of our coaches and have them pick the best one or look at a friend or talk with a friend or ask which one would be more – what would you be most passionate about? And that would be a great use of your time to just narrow it down to one and start moving in that direction. We all have experienced internet marketing ADD. We all have. But start eliminating those options. There's you have enough, you have enough ideas already. I'm just going through your questions. Wow. Thank you for all your feedback, everybody. I uh, just uh, actually getting a lot of questions about shiny object syndrome. And I think we just answered that is just start eliminating options and focus on, I mean, if you're passionate about something that helps. Wow. This is great. Christine says, how do you eliminate? Um, I mean, I, for me at the point in my life, it's what do I really want to do? So like I have all the, I have, I could come up with million dollar business ideas. You could sit and just put me in a room and tell me to come up with million dollar business ideas. And Brian and I will have 10 by the time we come out. It's just, where do we want to be spending our time? What do we actually like doing? There's a, there's a lot of ways to answer the question is the, the challenge. Answering the question, the best way is where the struggle's at because you could take the answer where are you most passionate or you could take the approach of saying uh, let's do a profitability index and which has the biggest potential or you could say uh, let's go with uh, quickest to market which one can we implement and get up today yeah which ones and and so while there's lots of good ways good ways to approach it the important thing is that you do it um, not so much how you arrive at the decision. By picking one thing, you've done a good thing, yeah. and um, so I think that kind of that that's a challenging thing to say. Here's the best way, right. but yeah. So a few takeaways I want you to get from this call: one, you're constantly choosing, and you already have the freedom to do what you want. It's just a matter of do you do it or not. If you don't have written goals, it's time to get them. Write them down. Zip them over to your coach at Freedom Fastlane. We'd love to go over them with you. Going over your goals. Post them in. If you're a if you're a Freedom Fastlane premium member, if you, you can test it for a dollar at freedomfastlane.com/trial. 
if you want, if you want, you can put them in the private Facebook group and have people go over them with you and help keep you accountable. If you want, put them on lifetick.com. Those are your goals. And then pick something that supports that. What strategies can you start to implement? We gave you three business models that work. Which one most supports the goals that you actually want? And then when that's in place, and we can help you do that, like our coaches can help you do that, help you move in that direction and, and start to, to free up your time and get more income so that you can spend your time doing what you really love. By the way, if you didn't like any of these models, or if you, if you just don't think that you can have the business yourself to do them, learn a little bit about them inside of the training of Freedom Fast Lane, and then go have other business, go have other businesses hire you to do it for them. You can, you can charge $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 a month per client, have three or four of them, and you're done. I mean, done, and you can go do that from anywhere. Our, our, our buddy Paul, in, he's one of the coaches in there, does that. We talked about him on the call, does that full time. Well, that's actually part time for him, makes a six figure income just having those clients. You can always take that. So, man, stuff just keeps coming in. I love it. Thank you. This was good for you guys, right? You guys all said that. Can you do me two favors? Again, I'm, I'm starting to take my message in a different direction. And I could really use your help. So I don't, I don't have a pitch for you, except that if I, if we can help you inside of Freedom Fastlane, you can try it for a dollar at freedomfastlane.com/trial. That's my, there's my pitch. But where I could really use your help is if you could head over to this thing called Facebook. Go here, Facebook.com/freedomfastlane. And if you could like this page, it's a fairly new page. And what would be, and the reason I want you to do this is because if you like this stuff, we talk a, a lot about it on my blog, on the Facebook page, and it would really help me see if there's a market here if you would like this page and then share the stuff that you like that we put out there. And if you guys like this call, if I put this on, on a blog, would you guys share it? Would you guys like tweet this video if I put it on YouTube and then put it on the blog? Would, if, would you guys like it? Would you share it on your Facebook? I mean, is this helpful enough to where you would start sharing this stuff? A bunch of you are saying yes. All right, cool. Then that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'll go ahead and post this recording on YouTube, put it on the blog. I'll email you guys about it. Share it on your Facebook. Share it on your Twitter. Like it. And... And that'll help me see what types of stuff I should be talking about to help you guys have the maximum value. <laughs> Liz says, I, I just liked it. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, so go ahead and like this page um, and tweet us and do all that stuff. How else, how else can I serve you? If these calls are helpful, I might start doing them regularly. If, if I might, I've, I really like doing things like you stream, if we can do stuff like that, um, maybe, maybe I should start doing it more often. I'm just waiting for feedback here. Uh, Roger says, can I feature you on a site or two? On? Absolutely. Appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, my podcast. Thank you. My podcast is called the freedom show. If you go to freedomfastlane.com, in fact, let's, let's just do that together. Go to freedomfastlane.com. I post the shows here, but you can subscribe on iTunes through a link there. My podcast links are here down. You can come here and you can just subscribe to the uh, to the iTunes here so that you're getting all those delivered to like your iPad and, and places like that. Uh, Liz says she couldn't find it. All right, just come to this link then. It's called The Freedom Show. So it would help me if you liked these pages, if you sent me some feedback, like in the comments of uh, of this blog. I should do one more book giveaway since we're ending. Since you guys stayed here till the end, I should do one more blog giveaway or one more book giveaway. 
Let's see, what question can I ask? What should I ask? Um, did anybody, as, hmm, <laughs> Roger says, the answer is seven. How about this? If anybody plans to, if, if the first person to say, I'm going to take a freedom fast lane trial and work with a coach <laughs> my goals, I'll give them a copy of my book. How about that? Since you're going to invest a dollar, I'll give you my $2 book. <laughs> David and Sherry tied. So guys, post your email address in the chat box and I'll zip over uh, a copy of my uh, my book, The Freedom Manifesto, to you guys. Whew. Thanks for listening to me rant today, guys. Brian, thanks for helping me. This was fun. No problem, man. Anytime. Yeah. All right. So I'll go ahead and post this recording. Go ahead and, and, and when I do, you know, share it with your network. We'll see if there's – I should keep talking about this stuff because – I'm, I'm a little bit tired talking about just strategy and making money online. I love it when we start talking about supporting your lifestyle and having businesses that pay for your life. Then I get pumped up. Not so much talking about, you know, biz op and stuff like that. So hey, can, 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 I, can I use your audience really quick to take a poll? <laughs> yeah, sure, of course. Would you guys prefer listening to a podcast? Or attending a webinar on a weekly basis as a way of learning and or accessing uh, someone answer your questions. Just interested to see what the feedback would be on that. Interesting. So one podcast and the rest are webinar. So you guys prefer something like this. Sounds, Sounds like, like okay. okay. I want to see more podcasts. That's interesting. Cool. Right now I'm doing both. Yeah. Cool. Hey, if we can help you. Uh, somebody asked, what does Freedom Fasting do for beginners? Well, first of all, I mean, we do have a 10-day success plan to get you moving and started. But, and we have a bunch of bonuses in there. But what's really helpful is you can hop on a line like this and go over, go over the ideas that you have with a coach who's successful, who's generated six figures online, and can give you feedback and tell you what the next steps are. That's the most helpful thing. I mean, there's a bunch of products out there that teach you strategy, but like I say, you already know enough. What's really helpful is to be able to interact with someone and 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 ask them, hey, am I on the right track? Am I am I am I am I doing what I need to do? And that's uh, that's really where the the benefit is. You can right now we have like four calls a week where you can get help with somebody who's successful. And if, and if you can't attend those, we have someone dedicated to just answering emails, just answering your questions via email. Like that is, that's hugely helpful. It's something that's really missing. And that's, that's what we do inside of the premium area of freedom fast lane is help people build those, those businesses. Just reading the question right now. Uh, Mike, the best place for you to get feedback on sites you want to buy is on those calls. Um, oh, there's so much feedback. I'm, thank you so much. You can, you can run it by me, like on calls like this would probably be best. Okay. Um, we should cut this off. Yeah, I'm going to have to get going, man. I've been on webinars for three hours, and I have another one at 7 o'clock. So. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'll post the recording soon. Remember to share it. My book on Amazon is The Freedom Manifesto. My podcast is The Freedom Show. Like me on like us on Facebook at Freedom Fastlane. Cool. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Talk to you soon.